Welcome, and welcome back to Brandler Bits. I'm Jeff Brandler. Today is the beginning of a multi-part series in which we're going to discuss anxiety and fear and what we can do about it. So let's get on with today's bit. Now, if you look around us day to day, week to week, month to month, there is a whole bunch of anxiety and fear in the world. Whether it's internationally, nationally, locally, there's lots of things that we are and can be pretty scared about. So much uncertainty. So many things that we can't possibly understand or figure out and the implications of how this is all going to work out. What I've seen in my office is an increase of people with anxiety and fear. So let's talk about anxiety. Anxiety, like most feelings, we can examine as a 0 to 100 scale. Pretty simple. We all have anxiety. That's the best part. If we didn't, we wouldn't be here. We need anxiety to perform. We need anxiety to survive. We need anxiety to be at our best. The problem is that when we have too much anxiety, we're not at our best. And in fact, we don't do a whole lot other than sit in our heads and our guts and say, oh, I'm pretty anxious. And so the best way to think about it is that let's look at a bathtub. You fill the bathtub, you fill it with water, it fills up, it fills up, it fills up. It's all good. When the bathtub overflows and goes all over your floor, into your kitchen, into your dining room, you have a heck of a mess. That's what happens when people's anxiety gets too high. It makes a heck of a mess. And then they rely on an assortment of techniques in order to make it better. Some better, some worse, some healthy, some unhealthy. I know lots of people that I've worked with over the years who have used quick fix band-aids in order to make their anxiety better. Addictive behaviors, for example, drinking, drugging, gambling, sex, relationships, toss buying and shopping and that too. All great quick fix band-aids. They do what you want it to do, your anxiety goes away, but you pay a price later. And then there's people who use healthy things, which is what we're going to talk about in this multi-part series. What can you do with the anxiety and fear that we have in the world that we live in today? So the other thing that we also have to think about is our anxiety, our fear is related to our thinking and our actions. That's our equation. Thinking is related to feeling plus action. Okay, here's the best part. We might not be able to change our feeling. We're going to be anxious because that's what we're supposed to be. It's part of what makes us who we are. So there are two things then that I can change. I can change my thinking and I can change my actions. It's pretty simple, right? So one of the simplest ways is to change my thinking. So one thing that you can do is say, what is the absolute worst thing that's going to happen here? Zero to 100. Then ask, what's the likelihood that that's going to happen? Zero to 100. If I'm a star performer on my job, I have great reviews, but I fear that I'm going to lose my job, I'd say, okay, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? I'm going to lose my job. What's the likelihood of that on a zero to 100 scale? Probably not really high. So then it makes it easier to say, okay, next. It is that simple. Hard to execute when you're feeling anxious, but it is that simple. One other thing that we can do is we can also change the behaviors. That's changing the thinking. Now let's change the behaviors. So I can go back to my healthy alternatives. I can go and eat healthy. I can exercise. I can meditate. I can do some hypnosis. I can do lots of things to make my anxiety better. I can work on my breathing. I can do lots of things, healthy things, to make my anxiety better. And we can also do one other thing which is a great combination of thinking and action. It comes from the 12-step groups. It's the serenity prayer. So it allows me to accept the things I cannot change, which, by the way, is most things, and gives me the courage to change the things that are changeable. So once I examine what's changeable, 
then I can do them. We have anxiety, we have fear, we have some healthy ways of handling, some unhealthy ways. So today, we're gonna be focused on thinking. So with thinking, that's the thought part, and that's the most problematic part when it comes to anxiety. Because much of anxiety boils down to two very dangerous words. Those two words are what if. Now, when people have anxiety, when I have anxiety, when you have anxiety, one of the immediate thoughts we have is what if. And then conversation goes like this. What if I lose my job? What's going to happen? Immediately, that produces anxiety. Because it's never one what if. It's a multitude of what ifs. What if I lose my job? What if I can't pay the mortgage? What if we can't pay the electric? What if we have no cable? What if we end up homeless? What if we end up dead on the streets in Manhattan because we have no money and nothing else? So it's this long-term catastrophizing what if which ends us way further down the road than just the simple fear about losing my job. When a person is what ifing, play it through, let's do the equation. So what if, what's my feeling? It's anxiety. What's my action? Nothing, nothing. I get frozen in my fear. I get frozen in my anxiety. I get frozen and there's nothing I can do or there's nothing I feel that I can do to make it better. The more what ifs I have, the more anxiety goes up. The more anxiety it goes up, the more what ifs I have. And this becomes a very, very, very long term, long term process of lots and lots and lots of anxiety. And talk about exhausting. Then I get all the physiological symptoms of anxiety, whether that's upset stomach or headaches or heart palpitations or muscle aches or exhaustion. And this goes on and on and on and on and on again. So you may be saying, okay, got the concept. Now what do I do about it? Excellent question. The first thing that you can do with what if thinking is what's called thought stopping. Okay, how does that work? Well, if you're sitting by yourself and you're having a multitude of what if thoughts, right now what you want to do is say the word stop. If you're in a public place, that's a terrible idea. People are going to look at you pretty strange. Public place, we have two other possibilities to use thought stopping. You can visualize a big red stop sign. Most people can do that. Or you can also visualize my personal favorite, the railroad crossing, which comes complete with gates, lights, and the ding, 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 ding noise that happens at the railroad crossing. Thought Stopping derails the thought, derails the what if, and then you get to do something else. That's for a future episode. One other thing you can do is you can challenge your thinking. You can say, where is your evidence to support this? How do you know this? So if we go back to my job example, how do you know you're going to lose your job? Well, I don't. Therefore... Let's move on. Let's breathe through this and do something else. Because most times, what if thoughts are what we call irrational thoughts. They have no facts attached to them. They're fears attached to them. So it's what if this and what if that and what if that, but there's no facts. So when you challenge the thinking, where's your evidence to support this? How do you know this? Generally, there isn't any. So you can use thought stopping and challenging irrational fears in order to reduce your anxiety. So today, we're going to focus in on the feelings and the action because they go nicely together. Here are some things you can do to reduce your anxiety. In no particular order, you can exercise. Regular exercise gets the system going, gets the endorphins going. You're doing something, reduces anxiety. You can write what you're feeling. Get a pad, get a pen. I'm anxious. I'm anxious because all the what ifs will come flying out. 
all the irrational thinking that you have about this and that and this might happen and that might happen and what if this happens and what if that happens will all end up on the paper. These are probably not the memoirs you're going to publish. In fact, these are the memoirs you're probably going to burn or shred because it makes you sound kind of crazy. And I don't mean that clinically. I mean that in your head, pretty crazy. You can also do some nice other things. You can do some breathing. You can do some meditation. You can do some yoga. You can do hypnosis. Those four things all revolve around lowering the body's systems of stress, anxiety, hypersensitivity, and placing them lower, slower, giving yourself a chance to regroup easy and calm and peace. All those nice words we use in an effort to calm down. All those words of peace and calm and serenity, those are good words and come from using these kind of slowing down things. Since we're all here together, we're gonna do a little breathing. Now, if you are driving a car at this moment, do not do this exercise. If you are listening to this elsewhere, you're all good. What I'd like you to do right now is to close your eyes. Just close them. Close your eyes and take two slow, deep breaths. Taking a large inhale. And then a very slow exhale. Pushing all of the air out of your lungs, out of your diaphragm. Allowing yourself to just push all that air out. So, nice inhale. and a nice slow exhale. Let's repeat that. A nice slow inhale. And a good exhale. Getting all the air out of your lungs, pushing it out. That's nice, calming. Let's go back, let's do those two breaths. But this time, what I'd like you to do is to picture a nice calm place in your mind. Whether that's a beach, the woods, wherever that may be, take your two slow inhales. Exhales. Inhale again. Exhale again. And as you're doing that, imagine a nice, calm, soothing, and serene place. Allow yourself to go there. Allow yourself to breathe at your own pace. Don't rush your breath. Allow yourself to breathe. Go as slowly as you wish to go. Allow yourself to settle in and allow yourself to imagine that place at whatever time it takes you to do that. This is a way that you're learning to reduce your anxiety.